Hunter is really biding his time in this race. <laughs> Biden. That's terrible, even for me, Ken. <laughs> Donald Trump has made a lot of wild attacks against Joe Biden and his son Hunter of late. Tweeted Trump in early October, and I quote, The Biden family was paid off, pure and simple. The fake news must stop making excuses for something that is totally inexcusable. Sleepy Joe said he never spoke to the Ukrainian company, and then the picture came out where he was playing golf with the company boss and Hunter. And, by the way, I would love running against 1% Joe Biden. I just don't think it's going to happen. Sleepy Joe won't get to the starting gate. And based on all the money, he and his family probably extorted. End quote. Now, none of that happens to be true. Trump's repeated insistence that Joe Biden did something nefarious by trying to remove a prosecutor in Ukraine is simply not borne out by the facts. No matter how many times Trump screams corruption, it doesn't change the fact that there is zero evidence that Joe Biden's actions in Ukraine as vice president had anything to do with his son. None. Well, Biden has clearly had enough of Trump's attacks already. He's indicted himself by his own statements. This is not about me. It's not about my son. OK, so we're clear on that part of the story. OK, good. We're done. Here's the thing, though. Trump's fusillade of falsehoods draws attention away from this very real fact. Hunter Biden could be a problem for his father's 2020 presidential campaign. Now, as the New Yorker's Adam Antus put it in a lengthy profile of Hunter Biden that ran earlier this year, quote, there is little question that Hunter's proximity to power shaped the arc of his career. And that, as the former Biden aide told me, Hunter is super rich terrain, end quote. OK, so Hunter Biden's personal and professional weaknesses are both well known and well worn at this point. Hunter Biden has admitted to using cocaine in college and as an adult. He has acknowledged that he has struggled with alcohol addiction. In the early 2000s, he admitted himself into an alcohol rehabilitation center for a month. Hunter Biden's relationships have been tabloid fodder, fairly or not. He and his first wife are divorced. For a time after his brother Bo's death, Hunter and Bo's widow were together. In May of this year, he got remarried after a short romance. The Yale Law School graduate worked for a DC lobbying company as well, although, according to his boss, never on clients that touched his father's work as a senator from Delaware in any way. It's worth noting Hunter Biden eventually dropped all of his lobbying clients and resigned from the board of Amtrak when his father was chosen as the vice presidential nominee back in 2008 by Barack Obama. Now, sidebar, Hunter told Entus, the New Yorker reporter, of his decision to walk away from his lobbying clients, quote, I wanted my father to have a clean slate. I didn't want to limit him in any way, end quote. And also during his father's years alongside Barack Obama in the White House, Hunter did start a company with, among others, Chris Hines, who's a stepson of former Secretary of State John Kerry. That company's goal was to help foreign businesses expand into the United States and other markets. So Hunter Biden wound up on several boards as a result of the company's work, including one for a Ukrainian natural gas company named Burisma Holding. So Hunter joined the board at Burisma in 2014, and he didn't come off of the board until this year. He was paid as much as $50,000 a month by Burisma, according to the New York Times, to sit on the board. Ukraine's former prosecutor general, though, Yuri Lutsenko, had said in interviews this year that Hunter Biden did not violate any Ukrainian laws. All right, so big picture. What's clear here is that Hunter Biden has benefited from being the son of Joe Biden. Kind of like how Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, and Ivanka Trump have benefited from being the children of Donald Trump. Kind of like Donald Trump benefited from being the son of Fred Trump. And on and on it goes. The scions of wealthy or influential, or wealthy and influential people, are often given a series of helping hands by their parents as they move through life. What else is new? Now, the question that voters in 2020 will have to answer is whether that fact of life bothers them. Or, more specifically, whether it bothers them enough not to vote for Joe Biden to be the Democratic nominee for president, or if he wins that, to be the next president. And that's obviously a very difficult question to answer, especially because the children of politicians are in a very gray area when it comes to newsworthiness. Everyone outside of the fringiest of fringe outlets generally agrees that children under 18 are off limits. And so you see almost no coverage of Barron Trump, for example, in the same way that Malia and Sasha Obama were largely ignored by the media during their dad's eight years in the White House. Same thing for Barbara and Jenna Bush. 
But where that line gets a little blurrier is when a candidate for president has adult children, like Biden and Trump both do. Of course, people aren't voting for Hunter Biden or Donald Trump Jr. to be president. They're voting for Joe Biden or Donald Trump to be president. Sidebar. Some people are, however, talking about Donald Trump Jr. running for president and maybe as soon as 2024. And sidebar. Now, on the other hand, if an adult kid is profiting solely from connection to his or her dad or mom, that seems like the sort of thing that voters might want to know as they consider a variety of factors in deciding who they want to cast a ballot for. Okay, so where does that leave voters with where we started, Hunter Biden? Clearly many wonder about how he got a board seat on a Ukrainian natural gas company that reportedly paid him handsomely, especially given his father's role as vice president of the United States at the time he joined the board. That could raise age-old questions for voters about how power and access work, not just in Washington, but around the world. And I'll note, by the way, that voters can have questions about Biden and Hunter, as well as questions about Donald Trump pushing for a favor out of Ukraine. However, I personally don't think Hunter struggles with addiction, struggles he's been open about, and his broader personal life are fair game in this campaign, since they have very little relevance to how his father would do the job of president. So that's where I draw my line, but that may not be where you draw yours. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.